what's happening guys Kenny here again and today I've got another hype versus reality video for you guys and it's going to be about this guy that's right guys it's finally happening this is the Chavez Knives Ultramar Redencion Street uh, this is the drop point version with a compound grind, but no secondary point. There is a Tanto version that has a secondary point right here. This one has a smooth transition, as you guys can see, and it is nicely done. Um, now, this is the Redemption model. There is also a Liberation and a Sangre, I believe, models um, that have different shapes, and um, I think this uh, one has a flipper. I think that's the Liberation. But uh, yeah, this is the Redemption model. And this is the G10 version. Uh, these were going for 235 originally. Um, they do have a few... Not I, I believe this version is not available right now. But they did get back in the titanium scale with the micarta inlay and the titanium scale with the carbon fiber inlay. And a few of those different models. I think the ti just titanium too. So those are uh, going to range between, uh, I believe, 275 and 325, depending on the, the version you get. Uh, this one was 235 originally, which I don't think these are available right now, but I do believe they're going to come back. So yeah, uh, getting into it, guys, this is a hype versus reality. So I'm going to go ahead and put the specs on the page right now. And we're going to get that out of the way. Just don't want to waste your guys' time spewing off a bunch of specs. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and do a size comparison. So, um, let's go ahead and start off with some Benchmades. It's a 940. You can see you got a pretty similar uh, grip size here. But a much narrower, narrower handle and blade. Uh, the bug out, guys. Go ahead and bring in a bug out. Again, very similar size knife. Then I'll go ahead and bring in some spider codes. Start with the PM2. So I know all you guys have that. And then the pair of three. Uh, the PM2 guys, really similar. If you're looking at, for one, grip size, very similar. And then uh, blade length, uh, cutting edge is actually very similar, although this has a lot more belly. Probably a little more cutting surface all around, but very similar, very similar um, as far as length of cutting surface. So those are good. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and bring in the backlash just for you guys that don't have, you know, have more budget-friendly knives. It's a very similar size. Add a choil in there, and that's pretty much a difference in length probably. A little bit longer though overall. And then I'll go ahead and bring in some Ferrum Forges just for, because these are, these knives you're going to see come in here a lot. Uh, this is the Ferrum Forge Fortis 2.0 and Archbishop 2.0. And they are very, you know, they're in the same realm as far as like uh, U.S. custom makers, um, like outsourcing to a Chinese produced knife. These two go to Wii for manufacturing and the Chavez is going to Riot. So this is a hype versus reality video guys and I'm going to get right into it um, starting with the height. Uh, yeah, really, there, you know, the hype was Ramon Chavez is, um, it, you know, he's, he's really coming into his own as a custom maker. And a lot of guys are really digging his designs. And and then he went ahead and went over to Riot and had this production model made. And I really was intrigued by, by Ramon's uh, designs. He just has really cool designs. They're awesome looking knives, um, tank-like build, and just, you know, the, the pocket clip from hell. Uh, just really cool designs that Ramon Chavez has. And then also, um, it's produced by Riot, which I have never had a Riot knife, and this this was my first. 
and I really was just intrigued by their, uh, just the fit and finish overall and their action, uh, their build quality is, is supposed to be next level even to like companies like Wii, even though, um, you know, from what I've seen, it seems like Wii's right there with them, but Riot's definitely on the higher end as far as like uh, price goes for the most part. But yeah, so I was really intrigued to get some Riot uh, in my hands and also a Ramon Chavez knife. I'd love to get one of his customs, but you know, that just don't have the money to go. Well, I probably would if I sold all my other knives, but then you guys would, wouldn't be getting as many reviews. So yeah, it's just a, up there in price for the custom. So this was a nice option to try and get a Ramon, to get a Chavez in hand. And um, Riot does a great job with, with knives, so that was a good choice. Um, I do love Ramon's designs, so that was uh, part of the hype for me. Um, I also missed the first run. I missed the, the titanium with the micarta. I just didn't have the money at the time, and I didn't want to do it then. And I didn't love the uh, coated blade necessarily with the compound grind. So... I did wait, and then these did come out through Blade HQ, and I missed that one. I didn't have the money at the time either. Then this one came out at Knife Center right around Christmas time, and I had gotten some cash, so I went ahead and went for it, you know? Uh, I also wanted to modify this originally, guys, believe it or not. I When I saw the the uh, G10 scale, I was like, oh, I, I can make a micarta inlay and have a micarta inlay in a G10 scale and be the only one to have that. So I was going to think I was thinking about doing that and also doing some anodizing jobs on the on the skull, maybe carve into the titanium a little bit. But I did want to do that and then uh guys that's going to segue me right into the reality when I got this thing and oh boy Guys, when I got this thing out of box, you guys probably watched the unboxing of this if you're watching this, and I was blown away, guys. Uh, the first things first, you know, I got it out of box and I just, I saw the beauty of this knife. I really, you can't see, this G10 is not going to come through in, uh, in the, just through the camera. You're not going to get to really see this, but... The finish, guys. Uh, the finish, when I took this thing out of box, the G10 has this luster to it. It's very beautiful. It, it has this, this shimmer, and it also has a nice texture. You guys can hear that. It's just enough texture, texture without being like rough, necessarily. Very nicely done. And uh, it... It was beautiful. The yeah. hardware has some really nice polish to it, like a shimmer, almost like the Ferrum Forges. Almost a jewel type finish. Really beautifully done. The the thumb studs are really cool. They have that awesome, like, like almost not stepped, but it's got these ridges, and it actually helps with grip as well. We'll get to that later. But... Just beautifully done, guys. The titanium has this awesome stone wash to it. You guys can see that there. Very happy with the the finish on this, guys. Um, and on the blade, the finish is beautiful. The compound grind, it goes, you know, you have uh, vertical striations here from the satin finish and then uh, vertical, uh, um, horizontal here, and then vertical again on the spine, with almost a diagonal on the the compound, on the flat grind. Just so you guys understand, a compound grind. This is a hollow grind, so this does have some concave to it, and then it goes out to a flat grind on the tip. That's where you guys are seeing this round. It's because of the radius of the comp of the of the uh, hollow grind going into the flat surface of the flat grind. That's what gives it that radius look. But the finish is beautiful, guys. You can see the, the shimmer, the way I change the angle and it focuses on a different part of the blade. It's just beautiful, very beautiful. And well done. Uh, and everything as far as finish goes is just beautiful, absolutely. 
Now, when it comes to fit, guys, uh, you know, there's a, there's a few things I noticed right out of box. Uh, for one, the fit, I did notice a little bit of the transition here from the backspacer to the G10. And uh, I didn't notice as much from the, from the titanium backspacer to the titanium scale. But to the G10 side, I could feel it was a gap. Or not a gap, but a, a you know, just there's a little hump there where it wasn't quite flush. And that was something that bugged me a little bit, especially spinning 235 on a knife. I was like, man, that should be perfect, you know? So wasn't super stoked about that. Um, that was one thing as far as uh, the fit goes. As otherwise with the fit, you know, perfect centering. Everything else seemed to be perfect with the fit. But that was one thing that bugged me was that. And uh, as far as... The action, guys. I mean, you guys saw this when I first got this knife. As soon as I put my finger on that thumb stud and pushed, it just flies out of there, guys. You guys <laughs> you guys probably saw me freaking out when I got this knife about how that action. And then the closing action. Um, it's even better than it was, but if you saw the unboxing, it was extremely smooth even then and surprised me. Very nice as far as action goes, guys. Uh, that was something definitely on the on the side of excellent. And there is a little bit of lock bar sensitivity, guys. Just so you know, I, I didn't really notice as much myself because I'm so used to using uh, titanium frame locks that I think I naturally don't put a lot of tension on the lock bar. I handed this to my buddy and he literally just locked himself out. He went to open it and he was like shaking. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, you're going to cut yourself. Stop. Don't put any pressure on that lock bar. I told him, like, put your finger back here or something. Just try and not, you know, you can put your thumbnail back there. It gives you a little more, little more, uh, you know, just a solid purchase there. But, yeah, it's just, you just can't be squeezing really hard on the lock bar or it will lock you out. There is a very strong detent on this and it is, it is thumb flickable and either way you can use the tip of your thumb or you can uh, use your nail. Or you can come back here with your spidey flick with your nail. I can even push it with the tip of my finger. So there's really nice ways to deploy this. The two ways you would assume. There's not much of a pinch here. There's not anything to pinch. So as far as slow rolling it actually guys, I find it a little more difficult to slow roll. You really gotta break the detent first and it's hard. You can use the back side like that to break the detent. Uh, I do find it a little easier with my left hand where I'm not on the lock bar, but it's still really hard to break the detent without just having this thing fly out. So that's one thing to keep in mind. It flies out though, guys. And that, listen to the lockup. That's nuts. Yeah, really good. And the detent is nice as far as closing goes. It does. It does suck it in nicely. And um, yeah, just really nice action, guys. Great action. There is that lock bar sensitivity, but you keep that in mind and you're all good. I am going to talk about the pocket clip and function as far as uh, in the pocket, guys. This knife was excellent as far as carry goes. I will bring in the bring in the scale. Four point eight. Yeah, that's not bad, guys, for how beefy, how thick this thing is. Uh, I know the other ones are a little heavier. I think they're in that like five ounce range. But for what this is, guys, this is excellent. It's very, very well done. As uh, for the weight. You know, you have one G10 scale, so that lightens it up a little bit, but titanium. There is no milling on the inside of this, but it's, it's very well done. Now, as far as the carry, the pocket clip goes, guys, this is awesome in pocket, guys. You, you know, you do have holes in the eyes there. I'll show you a picture of my in pocket. And it looks really cool. Uh, you do have this much sticking out, which is not much at all, and it looks rad, what is sticking out. 
so I'm happy with that. As far as function with the pocket clip, it's excellent, guys. Do you see how it's got some ramp here, and then it does pull out pretty, fairly easy. It could have a little more ramp on the back side to come out a little easier, and then this does get caught, the lock bar cutout for relief on the titanium. It does catch on your pants a little bit on the seam. It's a little, just a little sharp there, guys. That would have been a nice touch for Ramon to be like, oh, yeah, guys, we need to break that a little better. It's not super sharp. It's just this corner. Uh, this is chamfered right here, but this corner's not. So it does catch sometimes. Going in and out, it is pretty nice, though. There's plenty of room for the fabric. And a nice touch, guys, is you see the back side of the screw there. This is screwed in from the inside of the scale, which is a nice touch. It gives it such a clean look. And I do love this clip, guys. As far as ergos go, this knife is excellent. Um, I do find that this is excellent in hand. It's just really nicely done. And I, it's very hand filling. I have medium to large size hands, guys. This is, I have wide hands this way and short, kind of short this way, short fingers, short palm, but wide and thick fingers. You guys can see this is a, Paramilitary too. You can see I pretty much fill that handle within the uh, the two ends and also the 940. So you guys can get a good good grasp of how your hand's gonna fit this knife. It's really similar, and it's very hand filling. This is uh, five. I think it's half inch. It's 0.54, uh, so it's just over half inch. And then with the, I think with the pocket clip, you're talking 0 0.70. So it's very hand filling. And for going to work all day, it feels good and very comfortable. I didn't really find any hot spots on it, to be honest, on my hand. I did feel this a little bit, but it was just because I was pushing through all that cardboard. And what I did do, I was pushing hard. The jimping's done very well. It, it, it's deep but really thick jimps. They're, they're chamfered nicely. They are a little sharp, to be honest. He could have chamfered those a little better, but you get great purchase. Great purchase. It, I, I could see this starting to bug some people because it is pretty rough, but I don't. it doesn't bother me and I get great purchase. I, this knife's not going anywhere when it's in my hand. Uh, I really do love the, the ergos on this. I, in every grip, you do see me, uh, even the pull grips, even more comfortable in some ways. I, I love that. And uh, they just it just feels good in everything. So I really was happy with that. And just definitely happy. Now, as far as blade goes, guys, this is a beautifully done compound grind. S35 steel done by CPM. Just really nicely done. S35 is a, it's it's a very, very functional steel, guys. Uh, it was created by Crucible with Chris Reeves to be the better, it's like an upgrade to S30. I know a lot of you guys don't believe that's true. I believe that if S35 was done to its capability, I think it would be an upgrade or at least a nice substitute or option as far as S30 versus S35. But... You know, the way that a lot of companies do it, they leave it a little soft, I've, we've found in a lot of the testing and stuff. And it just, at a softer HRC, like 58, 59, it's going to be very comparable to uh, S30. But S30 has more carbon. So, of course, at a lower HRC, you might have a little bit, little bit uh, more, a higher edge retention. And it has more vanadium, I believe, as well. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong there. But yeah, no, just excellent, guys. The S35 on this does seem to be very well done. Uh, what I did sharpen this, and I will show you guys that right now. I'll show you me whittling some hair. The edge came up extremely keen, and it was very aggressive. It, 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 it sharpened up really nice, and I was really excited about this S35 because of how great it sharpened up. Now, in saying that, uh, I am, after this... Uh, Whittling, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of me cutting with the knife on there. I'm gonna show you, I did show you guys the original, there was a video of me cutting a bunch of cardboard up, so you guys saw the performance of this knife with the factory grind. 
and it was performing excellently. Now, what this is here, I just, this is after I sharpened it, you're getting to see pretty much, I sharpened it and then I went to town on this cardboard. What you're seeing here, this is all the cutting I did on this sharpened edge that I did. And I was expecting it to fly through this cardboard and at the end of it all just be just as sharp as it was at the beginning, essentially. I should, I mean, it wasn't that much cardboard to, for, that I feel like the apex should have been that damaged from it. But what I am noticing is that it did lose a bit of its keenness after the, all this cutting I did. And it, I was a little disappointed. Now, what I'm gonna say about that is Riot, I did read, I read an article about Riot and how they use a um, liquid cooled type of grind when they do their factory grind. Now, that's great, but we have, Super Still Steve talks about this. Steve talks about this a lot. If you haven't seen his video on this, guys, go watch Super Still Steve's videos about. He, he just does a lot of great talks in all his videos, but he does talk about how the damage, the fatigue steel from when they are grinding these, it's not necessarily just the fact that it's heating it up. It's also the fact that it's at high speeds. You have high grit, or I'm sorry, low grit at high speeds, and that is almost like you're pretty much doing a one-two punch to your apex, and you're gonna knock some carbides loose. You're gonna knock some stuff loose. So that's where we say like, you don't necessarily, it's not just the heat of the belt going fast, it's also the impact that is happening with all those carbides. So in saying that, I do believe that this is the factory edge performance. I don't feel like, I feel like once I sharpen it maybe two or three more times, I'm gonna get better performance out of this S35. However, you will see after what you saw there in cutting, um, let's see if I have some hair on my arm somewhere here. It's popping a few hairs. But it's not, not nearly as sharp as it was, guys. I mean, we're talking hair whittling. Look at that, guys. That's not good. Scrape shaving, pretty much. Now, if I go out here, or back back here, it's still screaming sharp. And out here too, I could probably still whittle hair on those two spots because it didn't get as much damage. But yeah, that main edge where I did most of my pushing, it was definitely just this edge is not as keen. Now, what I will say guys is this grind on this blade is spectacular. Um, with one exception, right here, guys. This is a serious issue with, I think, all of these Chavez knives. And this is where we're going to get into a bit of uh, negatives, guys. I'm going to go into kind of comparison, which I don't necessarily love to do. But in this one, it's just it was too hard to not compare. So what I'm going to talk about right here is this grind... First off, I want to talk about this grind specifically because it is a hollow ground blade with the flat here. This is beautifully done, guys. We're talking 15 thousandths right here. I did have the calipers. I did it in my behind the, ed uh, behind the edge thickness video live. And I did do this with the... I was in the channel chat page uh, talking to all the guys and I did take pictures of this. I, I should have just kept the pictures, but we got 15 thousandths right here which is awesome. It goes all the way to just about 11, 13 to 11 to 13 thousandths right in the center right here. Back out to like 15. Then where this compound grind starts, it's like 17, 18 thousandths, which is still excellent guys. And then all the way out to a nice hearty tip that is about 29 thousandths, right, right at the tip. And Comparably, I mean, you look at something like the PM2, look how the distal tapering, really thin tip. The swedge and thickness of this really does get, you know, translated to the tip. So that's really nicely done. But guys, you did see, you see that smile at the end there. Oh, I did get this sharp. As you guys can see, digging. But it, it was, sh it's sharp but it's ugly. 
And I'm gonna have to extend the choil almost out to here to get rid of that smile. It's almost gonna be a finger choil. I mean, that's, that's almost finger choil worthy. Although I don't really want a finger choil on this knife. It's not made to be that. So yeah, not, not pretty guys. That's not pretty. That's the only thing about this blade grind that isn't perfect, guys, really, to be honest. I love everything about this except for that. Um, there is a little bit of transition there. You see the, it does thicken up just a tiny bit, but that's not, that doesn't bug me, guys, at all. But that's pretty nice as far as transition goes on the compound. And it's almost perfect on that side. It really does transition really nicely there. It is a little thicker right at the compound. Um, yeah, so that was not pretty, guys. And I, um, in comparison, I did talk to Elliot about this. I showed him because I did have this knife. What happens, guys, is you do have a radius. You have a radius bit that cuts this hollow grind, and at the end there, it pulls up. It, what they should have done is they should have had they should have programmed this thing to either come down or come out, come back after, and extend your plunge grind. Do something in order to, I mean, extend your sharpening choil. You have to do something to counter that. Now, the difference is when you talk about Ferrum Forge versus uh, Ramon Chavez. Ramon, this is his first production line, guys. This is his first run, you know. This is his first opportunity doing this. So it's, he's going to be working all these little things out for sure. Now, when you talk about Elliot and Chris from Ferrum Forge, they have done many knives now with mass drop and we so he's he understands what he has to tell these guys to get the product that he needs in the finish you you have to go above and beyond with tolerances and telling them how to do things Elliot's already done these things on a cnc machine doing his own knives so he knows how to say hey i want you to do this i know it's possible i want you to do this instead of doing it this way i want you to do it this way and those are the things that make the difference for me between this knife and, for instance, my Fortis. Now, when you're talking like just basic, you know, f um, action and things like that, I really think these are on a very similar level. But when I go into the, the actual specifics of how the knife goes together and all the little quirks and little weird things about this versus this, or even bring in this guy, even this versus this. We're starting to talk, I'm seeing some big differences here in, in the production value. I did take this uh, Chavez apart, guys, and this is one thing that was really bugging me. So when, when, I, when I talk about this, I did talk about how the backspacer was not flush. When I took this guy apart to clean him and put him back together, this backspacer is not fixed at all. This is just two screws going through a backspacer with two clearance holes for these screws. So they do not hold them in place. It doesn't hold, the screws do not hold the backspacer in place. This backspacer is free floating. And it was very hard to line up the three surfaces, the G10 versus this um, backspacer versus the outside scale, the titanium scale. So lining all three up was very difficult and I had to tighten it and push it and slowly tighten it and fudge with it a lot. And that was not very amazing. Uh, it did go back together okay as far as like when I, when I screwed it back together, it did center itself perfectly and it was awesome action right away. So that part of the fit was excellent. This went back together perfectly. But this was weird, guys, and that was not amazing for me. And in comparison, you want to talk about like this knife, for instance, this is back, this backspacer is, is uh, shouldered so that this all locks together positively. And that's a beautiful touch, guys. That is where it really sets it apart comparably. So that, that's just a small thing, guys, but it's a huge thing in a sense. Same thing with this. You know, this is just standoffs and you might say, oh, that's easier, but hey, dude, it was, it was perfectly executed. This is shouldered and it locks in perfectly. And this thing was perfectly centered after and the action was perfect. Everything went back together very easily. I didn't have to fight with anything like I did with that. 
Uh, it also has excellent fit and finish. And you see all the, you know, like all the chamfering and everything. Elliot knew how to set the tolerances and set up the, the cap programs for those guys and just get them all set so they couldn't make mistakes. And that was a big thing, guys. That was a big thing for me. And this definitely, that was one thing that kind of won in the Ferrum Forge. And, and Ramon needs to fix that. He does. Uh, yeah, and I mean, there is one more thing I want to talk about, guys, in the negatives. Um, this thumb stud... You do see this is in the path of the cutting edge, which is not, it's not a huge deal. It's not that far out. I've seen ones that are like out here. This is, it's the one thing I will say is in sharpening, it is in the way of the, the stone. So I would have to angle it a little more to get it. So it's not like maybe angle it this way so that the stone doesn't hit it. Um, if you're hand sharpening, you still might need to remove these thumb studs just cause they are in the way. Now, I did touch one of the scales. I mean, one of the one of the studs. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. I did touch one with my stone and I was bummed. I did tape these off, but the stone did go through the tape and just, just barely nicked it right there. I think you can barely see it right there. But yeah, I was bummed about that, but it's not a big deal. One thing I'll say is in deployment, if this stud was just a little further out, like right here, it would deploy a little better. And even uh, with your, with your uh, finger flick from the back, and it would be out of the surface, but it wouldn't be as aesthetic, you know? It would be kind of on the jimp, and I think that's why he did it the way he did, which is again, you know, uh, function over feature, guys. I would have preferred, you know, move the thumb stud to a better spot and let it look a little weird, but be a little more functional. That's a little weird to me, guys, as far as the, the design, but it's not a make or break moment for me, and I do love the way it fires. Action is beautiful. Um, there is a detent ramp, so you'll see it does come to right here, and that's where it kind of catches, but if I do push it over that detent, it does come right down. So there is a detent ramp. I didn't notice that when I was taking it apart, when I took it apart. It goes right over that. There's just a little notch where the detent can kind of fall into place. It does catch on it, but it's not that bad. And you can push it past it. Action is amazing though, guys. Just fully drop shut. I don't even have to shake or anything. It's just at its own, and it's with its own weight, it will fall shut. It's really beautifully done. You gotta be careful with that sharp tip here. You can puncture your nail if you drop it down too fast, but knife chicken, guys. Yeah, and that's pretty much it, guys. I think I talked about everything I, I really wanted to, and I know this is going to be a long one. I did have a lot to talk about with this knife. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and go get yourself one of these if you can, if you, if you can afford it, and if, you know, whichever one you want is still available. Uh, I do know they came out with a whole nother run of the the titanium ones so i probably would have got one of those if i you know could go back but i i love this knife guys and i was blown away by the g10 version it is lighter as well so i, I may be happier with this one but i don't know uh thanks for watching thanks for your subs thanks for all your likes and uh comments um really enjoy this guys and i hope you have a great day